Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Avid Max Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady, your fly tire. We're gonna show you how to tie the bloody buddy leech. Uh, so we're gonna start out with our hook here. We have the fire hole 839, doing a size four today, a fairly large bunny leech. With that, we're gonna do it in, with a cone head. This is a brass cone head. I'm using the size one fourth, uh, the large cone heads in black. Then the underbody of the fly is gonna be a little bit of cactus chenille. They're doing the medium red color. And then we also have some crystal flash off the back. This is red as well. And then the main part of our fly is the Magnum rabbit strips. That'll be the, the main body as well as the collar. So as you can see, we have our hook set in our vise and I already went ahead and slid that cone head on here. Using a brass, but you could also do, if you needed some more weight, you could do a lead weighted version as well. And then uh, you can also add some lead wire if you need to get a nice heavy Leech, if you're fishing still water and need to get it down deep, it's a good way to go about it. So we're just going to start our thread right behind the cone head there, and then we'll work our way back to where we'll tie in the first material here. And right up to that bend, and we're going to start with some crystal flash. So I have about five or six individual strands of the crystal flash. I'm just going to measure right about that hook length or the shank length and then we'll tie that in. And then we can clip out the excess material here. Make sure we keep that right on the top of the hook and secure it in place. And then we can add our wire which is going to help hold our hair down here in a second. And we can tie that in right on the side of the hook shank here. And end right where our flash did, and then we'll just cover it on up here. We can hide that end up in the bead. It's a really great versatile pattern for still water, for rivers, pretty much anywhere you go. Have the opportunity to fish a leech it'll be really effective for you and i especially like the red accent that we're doing on this one you can do it in all black you can throw some purples and some different color hues whatever you like I just feel like red's a great attracting color and then the, the black leech kind of finishes them off so we're going to tie in our chenille you can see i kind of pulled off the fibers to where i was going to tie it in helps avoid some of that bulkiness underneath. That way you get a nice smooth body when you go and wrap the chenille. Looks like I got my thread there, but we'll be okay. Nice sharp hook on these fire hole hooks. If this is the first time Tuesday video you guys have seen from us. Be sure to check out the playlist. There's full year videos available now and we will just keep them coming. So from there I'm going to take my thread on up to the front and we'll go ahead and wrap do a couple of half hitches real fast and we'll wrap that chenille up right on forward and just touching palmer wraps as you go making sure to cover up all of your thread working on up to where the cone head is Just like so. I always play with my cone head. When you try in materials, you can kind of get it to, to skew. I like it to sit flat there. So I just like to make sure that it's doing that. We can capture off our chenille here. And trim out the excess. And we are ready for our hair. So I'm using the Magnum bunny strips. They're a little bit wider. Than the traditional ones, this is just a pretty large hook, so I like the wider strips. You also get kind of, a, it seems to be a little bit fuller, the hair, when you have the magnum strips. So 
I like to use these on the larger hook sizes. But we're gonna bring that right up to the front here and capture it. And then as you tie it in, you can sneak it into the bead there and make sure it's kind of nice and snug. And then we're gonna half hitch this again and we're gonna utilize that wire that we left hanging off the back to hold the, the rabbit strip, our zonker strip in place here. So before I do that, I got a lot of hair, so I'm just gonna trim it out. I like to utilize the crystal flash kind of as my marker as to where I'm cutting it. And the other thing I like to do is kind of get all the hair out of the way so that you're not trimming off anything that's gonna leave you with a, a flat, flat end on the back. So you got that nice point come out of the back. I also trim at an angle and that helps that a little bit as well. So now utilizing our wire here, just gonna position it up and kind of figure out where I'm gonna pull that across and we'll get all the hair out of the way. It's gonna be a little bit harder on the magnum strips just cause it's nice and full. But then we'll sneak it through and secure it down. Just make sure your magnum strip is right on top of that hook shank, like so. And we'll just work forward doing that same method of kind of sneaking in between the hair, trying not to trap too much hair. We'll do that four or five times here. And then we can grab that wire with our thread and tie it off. I also like to wet my fingers when I'm working with hair. Once I've kind of gotten wrapped through it, just keeps everything flat and out of the way, nice and clean. And spin out our wire. And then we can come in and do our collar. So I'm gonna work back on the hair just a little bit, give myself some room. Right about there. And then we're gonna create a nice dubbing loop. You can wrap your zonker strip, you can tie in another piece of zonker strip and just go ahead and do a couple of Palmer wraps to create the collar. I like to do, on this pattern anyways, I like to do the dubbing loop because it kind of makes it a little bit thinner. And then you see more of that red underbelly. And in order to do that, we can use the zonker strip. And I'm just going to try and pull these fibers outward as best as I can. And again, a little bit of saliva or wax can help make sure those fibers are, are kind of doing what you want them to. And then with our dubbing loop here, get on twisted. We can just sneak it in. So once you got a good bit of hair stuck in there, you can come up and trim it off of the hide. Making sure to keep the hair in the dubbing loop. So you got a nice clump of hair there. And then we'll give it a spin. Make sure that it's all locked in there. Just like so, and then I always like to kind of pull the fibers back, kind of pull out some of the ones that are loose in there. And then as we wrap it, we'll pull them and lay them back as well. A little bit of saliva or dubbing wax can help with this as well. Some water, if you keep a glass of water on your tying desk because you don't like to use saliva, that's a good option too. So now that we got it kind of working the way we want it to, we'll just start to wrap it around our collar while keeping it positioned the way that we want it here and up towards that bead. Just a couple of times around should do it. One more time, use all that hair. Nice thick collar there. So now we can capture the thread from our dubbing loop here with our bobbin thread. Make sure everything is secure and clip out that excess.
There we go. Now all we got to do is whip finish it. You can sneak right behind the bead and hide it up and under there, the cone. Just make sure when you're doing this with the whip finish you don't slide off and go around the hook eye. It'll leave some thread on your bead. Nobody wants that. We're going to clip out our thread. And you can sneak in there with some glue if you'd like, make it nice and secure. But that is all there is to the bloody bunny leech. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.